Welcome to a mini lecture about the highest and lowest powers in the Jones polynomial. Uh, this is about a formula that allows us to estimate the highest and lowest powers that appear there. Um, and this is very useful because it gives us a quick but quite sensitive piece of information uh, about the, the oriented link we're looking at. So uh, this is the thing you can read about in corollary 715. And uh, it's a corollary of the hard work that goes on inside section 7.2. So here it is. We take an oriented link L. We take a connected diagram of L, D. Then M of VL, capital M of VL, that's the highest power in the Jones polynomial. Um, that's less than or equal to one quarter of, of this uh, creature. Three times the rise of D plus two times the number of components in s minus d plus n minus two. And little m of v of L, the lowest power appearing in the Jones polynomial of L, that's bigger than or equal to one quarter of this creature, three times the rise of d minus twice the number of components in the smoothing s plus d plus two minus n. Right, and uh, easily said, what on earth does it mean? Well, let me tell you. You know what WD is. That's the writhe. 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 What is this quantity? Well, you know that bar of a state of a di applied to a diagram equals number of components in s minus d and s minus d that's the smoothing according to s minus what is s minus s minus is the state with all minus ones in other words it's the state that assigns sine minus one to every crossing in d so we learned about this in a previous video uh, how to uh, compute and understand these quantities. What is n? n is the number of crossings. Number of crossings in D. Okay, so uh, some of this we've got twice. We've got the writhe twice. We've got n twice. Number of crossings in D. And now, here, we've got s plus d. Bar s plus d equals number of components in s plus d. And uh, that's where s plus equals the state with all plus ones. And uh, as usual, this is with equality. When, when I say as usual, I mean... Uh, like in the theorem about the span of the Jones polynomial, this is with recall with equality if the diagram D is both alternating and reduced. So if D is connected and alternating and reduced, we know exactly what are the highest and lowest powers in the Jones polynomial. Okay, let's have a go at an example. Here it is. We're going to have a go at this particular link. This is L7A1. That's what it's called. Uh, and I've already made a terrible error, which is that my link, if I want to compute its Jones polynomial, better be oriented. There we go. I've oriented it. Right. So uh, let's do a little audit. Can we apply our theory to this thing? Well, is it reduced? Is it alternating? Is it connected? Uh, well, you can check for yourself that it is. It's reduced because if I delete any crossing, I still get a connected diagram. It's alternating. I check that by traveling around it. And it's connected. Well, that's clear. I can't separate it into two parts at all. Actually, this is, this is bad form. I'm going to put, I should always check the connected thing first because without that the theorem never applies. So let's do it that way around. There we go. So 
the formulas that we're going to get from the corollary, they're here at the bottom of the page, they actually give us equals, not inequalities. So let's put that in, in red. So we get equals because of all those ticks. Now, uh, let's work out all the things we need to work out. We need to work out the writhe, we need to work out the number of components in the two smoothings, and we need to work out n. Well, n, that's equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No. Let's try again. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right. Back we go. n equals 7. What about the writhe of d? d is this diagram here in the picture. Well, Let's work out, let's give ourselves three new copies for working out the writhe and the two smoothings. Okay. Oh, not enough room. Let's try shoving everything a bit to the left. Okay, major reorganization. Sorry, this is uh, not very classy to do my housekeeping in public like this. There we go. Okay. So let's uh, work out the writhe. So I'm going to write down all my arrows coming out of all my crossings. Try and make them as clear as possible. And then around here, out, 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 and out. OK, so what are my signs? My signs are minus, minus. Uh, minus, minus, plus, plus, plus. Uh, double check that, please. But I get those. So the writhe of D is equal to, let's do this in white. The writhe of D is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 minuses, 3 pluses is minus 1. Okay, so actually let's insert that into our formula. 3 times the writhe of D is actually minus 3. Let's do that here. Minus 3. Now, let's work out S plus D. What's that? Well, I take the state that's got sine plus 1 at every crossing, and then I take that smoothing at every crossing. In other words, the positive smoothing. So here, I suggest you pause and have a go at this. I am just going to do it. Uh, if this was in an exam or something like that, then what you should do is you should simply trace the diagram and uh, do it like that. Once you've done this enough times, uh, then it should become fairly quick to do. Uh, hopefully I'm not making any mistakes here obviously. Um, although uh, what I mean by saying that is that I could easily be making mistakes. Okay, so that's my S plus and I claim that mod S plus D, well how many uh, loops are there? One, two, three, four, five. So let's put that in there. Minus two times S plus D, that's minus ten. And now let's look at S minus. Well that's the thing that puts sign minus one S minus is the state that has sine minus one on every crossing. Whoops. And so to form S minus D, I smooth everything negatively. Uh, so uh, the easy way to check that I'm not going wrong, uh, that I haven't gone wrong here or in the previous one, is that all the smoothings in the right hand side should be exactly what they weren't in the left hand side. I am not making a cods of this. Okay. Let's keep going. See how it goes. Um, this will all be second nature to you before long. Right. Uh, there we go. Every crossing erased. How many components are there? One, two, three, four. Good. So that's plus two times four. That's plus eight. 
uh, let's fill in the ends, those were seven. Okay, uh, so we should be done. That's one quarter uh, minus three plus eight plus seven minus two. Well, okay, can I do the arithmetic? Minus three is minus three, plus eight is five, plus seven is 12, minus two is 10. And one quarter minus three minus 10 is minus 13, minus 11, minus seven is minus 18. Okay, so this is 10 quarters, which is five halves. And this is 18 quarters, which is nine halves with a minus. Ah, brilliant. I do not believe I've made a mistake. Do you know why? Well, one check is that this has uh, two components so that we expect the powers to be half powers. That's just a general pattern. Uh, the other thing to check is that, well, we know that the span of the Jones polynomial should be the number of crossings, which is seven. What do I get when I subtract five halves, uh, when I take five halves and subtract minus nine halves? Well, I get 14 halves, which is seven. Okay, so that's the end of the example and the end of the lecture.